hello. So I hear that you're going to take physics. And this is the second semester of physics. And you're like, what do I need to know from the first semester so that I can be successful in the second semester? And I'm going to tell you. Um, OK, so this is, I'm assuming this is an algebra-based college physics course. If it's a calculus-based physics course, you probably need to know this stuff too, but you may need to more know some other things too. Now, let's talk about the second semester of physics. If, in my mind, uh, so let's call this second semester. Typically, what's covered in here is the following. Electric fields, magnetic fields, I mean, for me, this is it. It's, it's all about the electric and magnetic fields. Um, but then you may also have things like circuits, which can be described in terms of electric and magnetic fields. Uh, you could have optics, which can be described in terms of electric and magnetic fields. Um, yeah, that, that's going to be it. Yeah. So what do you need to know? You took the first semester, maybe it was last semester, maybe it was a couple semesters ago, who knows. Okay, the number one thing, the electric field and the magnetic field are both vectors. So that means you need to know vectors. Okay, I promise you, vectors are going to be important. So these are the things that you need to know how to do. If you don't know how to do these, this is the time to, to go back and say, hey, I'm gonna figure this out, or talk to your instructor, or do something. Okay, there is an appendix in the book uh, that talks about these things, so you don't, or you could go back to, you know, the, I think it's in chapter one usually when they talk about vectors, it depends. So what kind of things you need to know with the vector? So here's a vector, a uh, vector A, uh, at some angle theta, uh, it has an x and a y, and a z component, okay? So you need to be able to add vectors, you can say c equals a plus b. You need to find the magnitude of a vector, the magnitude of c is going to be the square root of cx squared plus cy squared plus cz squared, um, you might need to know about unit vectors. Now, th this is not always true. Okay, it depends on the course. But a unit vector is a vector in the direction of that vector, let's call that vector a, that has no has a magnitude of 1 and uh, is in the same direction as that vector. So the unit vector a is equal to the vector a divided by the magnitude of a. Why do we care? Um, if you want to write the electric field as an actual vector, a vector equation, then you need, you need unit vectors. Okay. Uh, typically, let me just show you this, they'll write the electric field like this. Here's the best way to write it. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, that's just a constant, q over the magnitude of r squared r hat, where r is the vector from the charge where you want to find the electric field. And so the electric field's a vector, and that's not a vector, so you need this r hat in there. The other way is just to say e equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared. This is the way a lot of textbooks do it, but then when you have to add vectors due to multiple electric charges, it's like work, and you're kind of stuck. So I like this way better, but then you have to know what a unit vector is. Um, you should be able to find x and y components, but you have to do that to find the magnitude and to add vectors. Um, scalar multiplication of vectors, you need to do that. So like uh, k times a equals, um, okay, so then we have, we have two representations, we have three representations of vectors. I could say a equals ax x hat plus a y that's a y. y hat plus a z, z hat, where a x is the x component, a y is the y component, a z is z component, um, and it's some form of that. So then if I multiply this vector by k, I just multiply each component by k, k a x, x hat, plus k a y, y hat, plus k a z, z hat. Okay. Two more vector things. One of them I'm going, and, and you may not have seen both of these, but the next is the dot product. So uh, you may, it depends on what course you took. They may have kind of cheated on this. So if I have two vectors, uh, A equals, uh, I'm going to write it my, my favorite way, this way, AX, AY, AZ. So 
This is a, another form of writing uh, the components of a vector with just angle brackets. No one really does this except a couple books, but it's just easier to write. And then if I have b equals uh, bx, by, bz, then I can take the dot product and operate these two vectors together. You can't multiply vectors, right? But I can operate them with the dot product uh, a dot b. It's just going to be the x components multiplied together plus the y components multiplied together plus the z components multiplied together. So ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. Um, but you get a scalar value from this, and that's really important. Uh, now there's another way you could do this. A dot B equals the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. That's probably the one that you use, but it, I don't know, right? I wasn't in your class. Uh, maybe I was. I don't remember. Okay, so that's the dot product. Um, then we also have the cross product. This one is more complicated, and I don't normally do this, but let's say we have these two vectors, a and b, then uh, I could do a cross b equals c, okay? And the important thing you need to know here, we do have to do the cross product when we're dealing with a magnetic field. Um, <clears throat> the important thing is that the vector c is perpendicular to both a and b, and that's where you have to use this right-hand rule. Now, you may not have done this, right? The only place in the first semester that it would come up would be in when you're looking at torque, and I doubt that you did that this way, okay? Uh, so for, for my classes, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the cross product. So I wouldn't really expect that you know about this, but this one, I would, I would hope that you could use it, but if not, that's fine. Let's skip another page. Okay, now what about the, the, there's really two big ideas from the first semester of physics that are physics related, and that first one is this. Uh, Newton's second law, F net equals MA. You don't really use that too much. Those are, those are vectors. That's a vector. Uh, but it does come up. Okay. Um, so how do you add up forces and what do forces do to an object? And this is also equal to uh, the change in momentum over the change in time, where momentum is mass times velocity. It's not a key, it's not a key idea that you have to use. I mean, it's a key idea. It's not like there's things that are based on this. Now, the next one is uh, the work energy principle. Work energy says work is a change in energy. And work is equal to F dot delta R. So if I have some object and I move to over here, that's my delta R vector. And then if I have some force pushing on it, F, then F dot delta R. And there's that dot product, okay? But I could write this as F delta r, just the scalar versions, cosine of the angle between them. And that's the work done on a particle by a force. And this only works if the force, if the, everything's constant. If it's not, then you can't do it with algebra-based physics because you'd have to integrate. And you probably didn't do that because it's algebra-based physics. Okay, but you do need to know about work energy. And more importantly, you need to know about potential energy. Uh, I would go back and review the definition of gravitational potential energy, uh, UG equals MGY. Uh, and where does that come from? That comes from just the opposite of the work done by gravity. And that's the potential, but, we, but in the work energy equation, we actually have uh, work is the change in kinetic, plus a change in potential. That's the kind of energy that you see, but it's change in. And then we have, I have this one, UG, negative G, M1, M2 over R. That's the gravitational potential for objects that are moving really far away. Uh, and again, we deal with the change in potential. So that's, that, this idea of potential does come up in the second semester of physics, and it's a big deal. Okay, there's some other math stuff in here. Uh, here's, let me, I want to show you this problem just because it comes up a, more often than you would think. Uh, 1 over A plus 1 over B equals 1 over C. Okay, this does not mean A plus B equals C. Be very, very careful with this. Okay, if I want to solve this for C, I'd have to first get a common denominator here. So I could say 1 over C is going to be, I can multiply this by B over B and this by A over A. So I get uh, 
B plus A over BA, right? I had to get the common denominator. Now I can take the inverse of both sides and I get C equals BA over B plus A. And that's not equal to A plus B, right? Okay, so that comes up a lot. Uh, solving two equations to a knowns comes up. You'll get some something like uh, 3I1 plus 2I2 equals 4 and then I1 minus I2 equals 3. I'm just making up stuff, okay? And how do you solve two equations to unknowns? I'll, I'll remind you that in this case, you could, you could multiply this by uh, negative 3 and then add it, but I would encourage you to solve for one variable and then plug it into the other one. Uh, but I don't want to go into that too much in too much detail. Um, here's another important thing, scientific notation. comes up a lot, okay? If we look at things like the electric constant one over four pi epsilon naught, that's nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. So these numbers are huge. Wait, is it nine times 10 to the negative ninth? No, that's right, nine times 10 to the ninth. Um, these numbers are either huge or tiny because we have the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Coulombs. So if you can't deal with scientific notation, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Um, so you might want to go back and review that. Uh, review conversion of units. So if I have, let's say, um, I'm trying to think of a unit con to convert. Uh, well, I'll just put it down here. I have a video on unit conversions. I don't want to do one right now. Okay, so unit conversions. Um, I think that's good. I think if you know all that stuff, you should be ready to go. There's a couple things that come up from time to time. Uh, there's the uh, circular acceleration. I wouldn't, if you don't memorize this, I think you're probably okay. But if you have an object moving in a circle, it has a, a circular acceleration of V squared over R or omega squared times R. So V is the velocity, R is the radius of the circle, and omega is the angular velocity. That does come up. You have kinematic equations like this x equals x naught plus v x naught t plus one half a t squared. Uh, you have v squared equals v naught squared plus two a x minus x naught. Uh, you have uh, v equals v naught plus a t. Okay, those come up. I, I if you don't memorize those, I, I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't think it's a problem. If you don't memorize the work energy stuff, I don't think that's a problem, but you have to understand what that means. Okay, so I think that's what you need to know to be successful. Um, if, if you feel like any of these are like out of line, then that's when you can start studying. Get a jump on the things that you don't understand early, uh, because if you get to that and you have to learn new physics and the stuff that you're supposed to know, it's gonna cause more problems. But you can do it, I believe in you, and I will talk to you later.